John here in Florida and I'm back with part two of trying to stiffen up the arm on this Delta bandsaw here. Uh, I remember we did a couple experiments in part one. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. Um, in this case now, we want to find out where this arm is flexing the most. Okay, we know it's moving off about five thousandths down here, but this is obviously amplified from some type of twisting motion up in here. So what we want to do is try to find out where it's really twisting at, where it's moving at, because the amplification isn't the problem, it's, it's the twist. So before we start beefing that up, let's do that. Okay, so looking at this arm, if this shaft or this column here is moving back and forth this way, okay, it's gonna be amplified out here. But this may not be the problem. This column may not be the issue here. It may be this part here actually swinging in and out like this. So let's go in here and try to figure out what it is that's going on. Okay, because I do know that this is amplified, what we're gonna have to do is simulate that amplification back here. Because we know that at this point is where the only force can be exerted. So somewhere before this point here is where that twisting motion has to be. So we're gonna take this uh, precision straight edge and put, put it back here and clamp it on. Okay, so with this straight edge coming off the column at this direction, we've got the dial indicator on here and zeroed, and we have a little preload on there. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on and see if we have any twisting motion in this column this way. So let's do that. There we go. Let me get up on that. That looks like uh, one, two, three to four thousandths right there. That's yeah, about three thousandths right there in that corner. So we know that this column is, is definitely twisting this way. Let's double check and see if we have any movement the other direction. So let me stop this. Okay, so now we're coming off the column this way instead of the twisting motion this way. And again, we're amplifying this significantly uh, just to see how much movement we have. Oh my goodness. I hope I'm getting that on the uh, camera all right. That, that dial's not moving, that upright is stiff so all the movement we're getting in this is in this arm at the top going like this not in and out like that so it's going to be this area here i wouldn't be willing to guess that this area right in here is where we're going to need the most beefing up coming over to this side that fluctuation would be coming right in here right in that corner right there and that would be moving this way not this way okay so i'm going to go ahead and take that other arm and start beefing that up Okay, so today we're gonna to do this with a torch. Um, normally I'd do this with a plasma cutter, but I found out recently that if you don't train out your bottles every so often, they have to be recalibrated and it costs you a lot more. So I figured, you know what? Let's start burning up some gas.
Okay, so I did a couple more trimming cuts on that just to get it more or less where I wanted it. Cut it back too far here, but that's okay because the twisting motion isn't right up here, it's back here. So this is where we're aiming to reinforce it the most. So, and I, actually when I originally thought of this plan, I wasn't even gonna get it past that point. But anyway, so we're gonna clean this up a little bit right in there. We get on the uh, belt sander. We're gonna sand this out, get it to all fit down inside of there, and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so here we have it. Um, when I drop it in, it falls down onto the webbing. When I say the webbing, I mean these parts here, the webs. One thing you have to look out for is these webs here, here, and here ride right up to the top edge practically. So in this case, I had to groove out spots for those webs so it'd sit down. So it'll sit down on there like that. I'm gonna clamp it down. Uh, before I do that though, because this is a long flat piece and we know that, that the weak point is in here, I'm gonna put my own webbing on here like this. One here and one here. And I'm gonna do this to stiffen it so it, it doesn't try to bend this direction like this, okay? You gotta remember, this is just mild steel here that we're gonna weld into this cast iron. So let's do that first before we do anything. Okay, so we've got this all welded up. I went ahead and welded that square washer onto that bolt because this has to go in first. This is still hot. This has to go in first just like this. Otherwise, we won't be able to tighten this down because there's no way to get into it. That'll allow us to, to drop that down in place and still have a little bit of movement there. I've got, I've got my own gusts welded in here. So those are ready to go. There we go. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, clamp this all down and I'm gonna tack weld around it and then I'm just gonna braise the whole thing in. So let's get that on the road. Okay, so it's all welded in for the most part. Uh, there's spots I didn't bother to weld up. I just was basically concerned about this area right in here. Down at the bottom, I did uh, weld it here and here, and that's to keep that gap from possibly separating out this way. Notice the bolt is all contained in there on its square washer, so it's not going anywhere when I try to tighten it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, brush, I'm gonna clean it all up real good. I'm gonna stick it over there on the uh, saw and we'll see what we got okay so i took the uh, overarm off here and one of the dowels is still intact but i noticed the other one is uh, broken off right here and the other half of that's actually up in the overarm casting so i'm gonna have to drill that and get a new dowel and put that in so give me a minute on that one okay i got to going along on this and thought you know what maybe somebody might be interested in how i did this uh, what i did was the dowel itself is hardened. I, I can't drill that with a regular drill. So what I did was I, I punch marked it. I and took an eighth inch carbide ball end mill and I started into the punch hole. And once I got that going, I took a uh, larger, this is about a 330 seconds or so uh, mill once it started getting down in there and I just ran the mill down in. And because, because the punch mark wasn't perfectly in the center, so then I, I took the mill and I milled it until I was just about perfectly centered in the pin. And now that I've got a good centered out point here, I'm coming behind it with a quarter inch uh, ball end and I'm gonna just go ahead and finish drilling that out. So let's see how that goes. Oh, my battery's dead. Looks like she's doing good, almost there. 
switching over to a regular mill now that I'm almost there just to get it flat in the bottom. Okay, it looks like I caught a little bit of the casting right here. I don't know if you can see that a little bit right there. So, and it looks like I got just a bit of that left over right there, that dowel. I'm going to pop that out real quick. Okay, I'm maybe fighting that for nothing. It looks like I do have that centered. So that must just be an imperfection in the casting because I, I can't take that out at all. Um, I even ground a special chisel for that and it just looks like that's a imperfection in the casting right there where I'm trying to take it out. I know it's probably not coming out very clear on camera. I got a lot of reflection from the light, but that spot right there, I thought that was still part of that pin, but I guess it's not. Let me go get another pin. Okay, so this is all clean, so let's pop this pin down in here. All right, I look about the same height there. Okay, so let's get that arm up on there now. Oh, and I'm telling you what, that plate alone makes it feel like it's double the weight. I know it's not, but it sure does feel like it. There we go. Ah, oh, boy, that's tight. Start putting it back together. Okay, in the intro to this video, I, I put a dial indicator up here on the other saw, and I was just showing how much this is free to move up and down. That movement also transfers into this here, which was causing a twisting like this. This piece here actually moves up and down less, meaning the wheels are, are less out of, of alignment than the other saw, or less out of true than the other saw. So it, it doesn't put nearly as much strain on this arm as the other saw does, okay, which is a good thing. Um, so now that we've got this all welded in and it's all solid, Let's go ahead and back up here so I can have some room. And I've got my dial indicator lined up here. I've got it zeroed. I've got it true and square. I've got some preload on it. So let's fire it up and see what it does now. Okay, I think I'm gonna pinch myself because I feel like I'm dreaming. There's actually no movement in this now. There's some vibration in here because there's vibration through the table. So, but there's actually no swing. There's no movement going on there. So we did in fact take all that flexation out of that arm. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm trying to gauge down here just by eyesight, but nothing. I'm really happy about that. And if you look up here, just visually, you can see that that's barely moving up and down compared to the other one. I mean, it moves a little bit, but that's because of the trueness of the wheels. They're, they're never gonna be perfect on these saws, especially with the rubber bands on there. Okay, about that. So now I gotta tear this all down and uh, do a few things to it. Hang on. Okay, so back over here on the bench. I was get, gonna paint it, but then I thought, you know what? I had the ground clamp stuck in here when I was welding this, and I just don't like that being open like that. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything. Obviously, the strength portion of it's back here that I need, but I'm just fussy that way. I'm gonna grind that a little bit and just weld in those ends. <clears throat> I was thinking of cleaning up some of these other welds. There were huge gaps right here where I had to make a few passes to get that all closed up. Same here. Uh, the rest of it, you know, it, it doesn't look like your typical MIG or TIG welding or even arc welding for that matter. That's because it's plasma. The plasma actually starts down at the base and, and comes back up with the weld. So you, you're already going all the way to the root when you start with plasma. And the nice thing about plasma is it fills back real nice. Problem is it doesn't leave that, that beautiful uh, 
dime rolling over dime roll pattern that, that you'd uh, normally get with an arc or a uh, MIG welder but uh, that's okay because I know it's solid and I know it's something that I can do at home as far as welding cast iron to other materials without issue because the heat of it I don't know if you saw my video on the multiplaz 3500 it, it's putting them out about three times the heat of an arc or a MIG welder so it, it, it just goes right in it just melts everything and brings it right together so it's one solid piece there's no cracking or anything when you get done with this if you're doing it right anyway and there is a little bit of a learning curve to this so any critics on the welding just hold it um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and then I'll, I'll paint it and then we'll get it back on the beast and see how she goes All right, so I guess that's just about gonna finish it up. Let me just show you the uh, last couple of things I did on this and then we'll be done. This here, I went ahead and, and cut off and uh, ground off about 50 thousandths off of each one of these and then re-welded them back on and it moved it back far enough to give me clearance on each side of the blade. Here, I perforated it and then bent it in the uh, metal brake over there. and it centered it off pretty good. What I'm gonna do is I have some long strips of Teflon in my work box, and I'm gonna cut those and epoxy them in just to give this something to uh, hit against if necessary. I've tapered this back down here, so it's tapered there, tapered coming off, so that's no problem there. Uh, this here, I went ahead and uh, flat disked all this back, and uh, if you wanna look on the other side here, I don't I don't think it came out too bad I mean there's still some high spots in there where I wasn't flapping around enough but uh, it smoothed it up it made this all look like one solid piece now and it is solid it, it's very solid <clears throat> I repositioned my electrical boxes here they were sticking way too far out here before I want to give myself a little room on this side which I did and that's about it this is the finished product it's painted up I need to I need to touch it up here and there because when I was putting this all together, I was kind of rough on it, but uh, that's no big issue. I'll, I'll touch this up another day. So let's so, take one last look at this before I uh, sign out for today. Okay, got some vibration coming up through the table, but uh, look at that. So I guess that's just about it. Thanks for watching. I hope I have something interesting for you again the next time. As always from Florida, Don out.